Dr. Vanessa Grubbs, MD, nephrologist. Welcome back to NEF Talk. Thank you. Happy to be back. Let's stop playing the race car in EGFR reporting. That's the provocative title of your article in the Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology, and it certainly got our attention. Are you surprised? Pleasantly. No, not surprised. I was hoping for that. First, Dr. Grubbs, what is EGFR and how does it relate to patients, especially black patients, who could be diagnosed with declining kidney function? EGFR stands for Estimated Glomerular Filtration Rate. And that's all fancy medical language that simply means how well are your kidneys filtering your blood. We have an equation that uses a simple blood test, the creatinine, to factor into this equation and help us figure out how well the kidneys are filtering. Why are you concerned, especially in the area of achieving an accurate, unbiased patient diagnosis, that the current criteria for GFR testing is deeply flawed without a scientific basis and may even be racist. What are the consequences? I definitely think so because when the equation was developed, the researchers uh, were considering all the things that they thought might affect how the kidneys filter this creatinine, which is produced at a pretty steady rate in our bodies every day. And it comes primarily from muscle cells, uh, like waste from our muscle cells. In determining what things might affect creatinine, they thought about, okay, um, a person's gender because men tend to have higher muscle mass than women and age because younger people tend to have higher muscle mass than older people and race. This is where they made the big leap that black people have higher muscle mass than white people. They didn't really have a good reason for incorporating race into the original analysis to develop the equation, but they put it in anyway, self-reported black race, along with a lot of other biological variables. And the reason I stress biological variables is because race is not a biological variable. Race is some categories that we made up for political reasons to decide where people get to live and who gets to vote and political things like that. They set up the analysis as black versus other, which basically suggests that black people and only black people are different from every other human being on the planet. You said in your article that there was no rationale offered for the inclusion of race in the first place, but the practice is rooted in a history of work from fields that set out scientifically to prove blacks are biologically distinct and separate from whites. What do you think the motivation was? I think we just have this long history, particularly in this country, of comparing blacks and whites. And originally, when you go back to slavery days, it was really to prove that in the language of the day that the Negro was actually inferior to the white man and therefore would justify them being enslaved. Therefore, they must be uh, different on a genetic DNA level. And it just uh, presupposes that the group like black race is homogeneous, that everyone who identifies as black is the same, which could not be further from the truth. So essentially, we are still doing testing, the EGFR, based on pseudoscience, which is essentially masquerading as fact. And this goes way back. In fact, you actually quote physician Samuel Cartwright's 1851 report on disease and physical peculiarities of the Negro race, which is uh, pretty startling that we're still living in the past in terms of testing people. 
Exactly. Why it matters so much at this point is because the equations, the, the most recent equation suggests that black people have an EGFR that's roughly 16% higher than other people. That might not seem like a huge number, but from a clinical perspective, it might delay the diagnosis of a person having real chronic kidney disease. It might delay their referral to nephrology care, delay their referral for kidney transplant evaluation, and wrongly identify them as being appropriate for certain medications or particular dosing. It could have some effects on folks who aren't black. For example, someone who has limb amputations or is a bodybuilder, but they're not black. So we're misinterpreting the GFR just solely based upon whether or not a person identifies as black. You were quoted in an article in STAT, the medical publication, in which they stated that normal adult kidneys function around or above a score of 90, while patients can be added to the kidney transplant wait list once they hit 20 or below. Patients who are black automatically have points added to their score and this is a reiteration of what you just said, which can make results appear more normal than they might be, which could in turn delay needed treatment. That's a very serious consequence of being wrong. Right. The difference can be years in, in our day-to-day. So when a non-black person's GFR is 20, the number, the GFR that's reported for if you're black is more around 23, 24. That may seem like a very small difference, but in reality, it may take years for that number for if black to drop down to 20. And years is critically important when you talk about being on a kidney transplant wait list because time on the wait list is still one of the most important factors that help us decide when it's an individual's turn to get a kidney. These numbers are very crucial because important decisions, as you just said, are made on diagnosis milestones based on these numbers. Yes. You mentioned that completely normal kidney function is above a GFR of 90, assuming there's no protein or blood in the urine. And the kidneys can do uh, pretty much everything they need to do as long as that number is above 60. And below that is where the, we are, do a lot of careful monitoring, trying to replace things as we need to that the kidneys can no longer do. But once the, that GFR drops down to five, between five and eight, most people will need to have dialysis or a transplant, like some type of replacement for a kidneys. And if they don't get it, then they will pass away. Ooh, those are very serious consequences of being wrong. I know doctors are often accused of exaggerating, but this is truly life and death. Things can change drastically from day to day, even if a person is on dialysis, because in stage kidney disease, it's, it's a very serious illness. And I think many people in the community don't really get that because dialysis is viewed as such a, you know, like a mundane thing. You don't even need to be in the hospital for it. You just go to a clinic and you get your treatment. And as long as you show up, you're good. But no, it's not the case because dialysis really only provides a level of replacement of a GFR of about 20 to 25. It's nowhere near perfection. Whereas if you get a kidney transplant, which definitely has its downsides about it as well, at least you're getting a kidney that is normal. The life expectancy, the lifestyle, all of these factors are so much better between dialysis versus transplant, there's simply not enough kidneys to be transplanted to go around. It really matters at what point you get in line in terms of waiting for a transplant. Will you please read the last paragraph in your article from the Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology entitled, Precision in GFR Reporting, Let's stop playing the race card. 
this piece is making the point that the reason that we use race in estimating kidney function is based on flawed science. And we don't have to do it because we actually have a very good replacement right now. This is the final paragraph. We should replace current GFR reporting with the race-free cystatin C-base equation now. Going forward, we must question our decisions to center biologic science around constructs that instead of having a biologic basis beyond superficial classifications around skin color and hair texture, are muddled with complicated and unmeasurable societal factors. Let's stop playing the race card like it's a genetic marker. It simply is not. What kind of response have you had from medical colleagues, medical students, patients, their families, responding to this article and your point of view We've been talking about it, writing about it, trying to get it abolished for a very long time. More recently, medical students who are early in their training are looking at the curricula that they're being taught, all these things that are so-called different by race, and they are questioning that because their point of view is, wait, we came here to learn how to be good, caring physicians. It feels like you all are teaching us to be racist. You all are teaching us to make decisions based upon someone's race when we've always been taught that race is a social construct, not anything based on any real biological science. And so they are, have been a very active around the country and really pushing for change. You sound cautiously optimistic, doctor. No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, No, I'm not cautiously optimistic because there is a very strong and powerful force in maintaining the status quo. Remember, this has been in place for 20 years and the powers that be have not questioned it. They have not tried to run any special tests to find out why um, self-reported black race seem to um, better predict true GFR, true kidney function. What I am encouraged by is that there is such a large group and and growing group of people who are becoming aware, becoming enraged by this, and really speaking out to make real change. Dr. Grubbs, thank you so much for joining us today on NAFTALK. I admire your passion and dedication to change for the good. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk about this really important issue and help lift the voices of everyone else around me who feels the same way. NAFTALK is a podcast series created with nephrologists in mind from Satellite Healthcare, a non-for-profit dialysis provider and clinical researcher with a special focus on home as the industry's home dialysis leader. I'm Christopher Springman, and thank you for joining us.